What's going on, everybody? Crazy Dog back with my Browns Bungles Battle of Ohio Part 1 Week 7 Game Preview. As after what feels like an eternity, the Browns are back at the dog pound this week as we welcome our little brothers from southwestern Ohio. The Cincinnati Bungles, who come into this game at 2-4. and four. Of course, the Browns are 1-5. and five. So uh, we got ourselves a battle, not only for Ohio, but for the basement in the AFC North. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, uh, the Bungles are coming off a win against a Malik neighbors list New York Giants team. Well, the Browns actually hung tight with the Philadelphia Eagles, who had just gotten back A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. And yet, we still had a chance to tie the game, but the offense, I don't even know what you even call it. They derped, maybe? I mean, damn, they got within the five-yard line. Then I guess they just got a little too excited because... They hadn't really been in the red zone before, so uh, they were a little too uh, gun happy, trigger happy, and um, yeah, back to back false starts, backed them all the way up, reduced them to a field goal, and that's all we'd get. We went from potentially tying the game and probably losing on a walk off field goal, because that's how it probably would have went, to getting a field goal. And then not being able to get the ball back to potentially go down and win it. And then, of course, you know, uh, earlier in the game, we did miss a field goal as well. Classic. But, once again, another week, no offensive touchdowns. The only touchdown we scored was via a special team's blocked field goal returned for a touchdown by Rodney McLeod. Swear, we've had more defensive and special teams touchdowns lately than offensive touchdowns. That's what it feels like. It's sad. Rodney McLeod himself has as many touchdowns this year as Amari Cooper and Jerry Judy. He's right up there with them. It's freaking ridiculous. And Rodney McLeod is a backup safety. And I'll tell you what, I'm glad he's stuck around. It sucks that this is his final year, but I'm glad he's stuck around. He's been a very good leader for this team, right? I think guys like Rodney and Miles and Jeremiah and those guys, they're going to be the ones to keep the ship on course. Because without those guys, oh, everything would have already collapsed. They, these guys wouldn't even be trying right now. I was expecting... The Eagles to blow our doors off. Believe it or not, we actually kept it close. Is that more on us actually being somewhat decent? Or the Eagles just moosing around? Like I said in my recap video, it's like the Eagles were testing us to see if we really wanted the game or not. Uh, but, you know, if there's one thing I know about this team, we own the damn Bungles. We do not lose to these frauds at home. It has not happened since 2017. Literally, Baker showed up to Cleveland and he started whooping their ass. From the year we had Freddy, we beat these guys at home. I think that was the game I went to on my birthday. I was. Denzel Ward had a pick six. It was beautiful. I loved it. Let's keep that going, right? Let's keep it going this week, okay? Because what a victory this week will tell us all is that no matter how bad we are, we still own the damn bungles. We still go out there and whoop their asses. And honestly, I expect the same thing this week. Because one, it's an AFC North rivalry game. Is this our first AFC North game of the year? My golly, I think it is. Man, if this team ain't fired up for this week, 
I mean, damn, nothing gonna get him fired up. I mean, for real. This is our chance to not only get back in the win column, but also be 1-0 in the division. All right? Plus, they'll kick the crap out of our, you know, in-state rival, too. Yeah. But I do know one thing as well. Huntington Bankfield is going to be a very hostile place on both sides. Both towards the Bungles and, honestly, towards the Browns. They mess up even one time, the Boo Birds going to be letting them have it. That's for sure. Not necessarily the whole team, but Deshaun. I will say, the second half of that Eagles game, Deshaun actually looked not if only he actually had a good first half, though. And I will say they were moving the ball a little bit, right? It's not like they were stuck in the mud for the entire half. It's just they really they could just couldn't get anything really going. The one drive they had something really going, they boofed. They dirt. That seems to be a thing with this team. They get something going and you're just waiting for the derp. Right? You're just waiting for them to mess up. We'll see if that happens this week. Hopefully it won't. Before I get into the series history and stuff, I do actually uh, have some news to talk about. Of course, I did talk about it a little bit in my uh, game stream before Bungles, e before Bungles, <laughs> Browns, Eagles. Um, from Daniel Oyafusi, as you can see the date, this was uh, on October 12th. So a quick date check this was on saturday night but i talked about this in my game stream on sunday from daniel oyafusi and i quote browns running back nick chubb is expected to make his season debut when cleveland hosts the bengals in week seven per source at mary Kay cabot on it first i swear to god don't do it to me browns don't you dare do this to me I know what y'all going to do. I know what y'all going to do. Nick Chubb coming back. I know they're probably going to wear the Cardiac Kid combo. If they break out the Cardiac Kid combo at any point this season, you better not lose. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, what's the Cardiac Kid combo? Well, it's uh, brown jerseys, orange pants. Now, especially since they have the white face masks, then it'll really go good together. But do not ruin Nick Chubb's return to the field. I expect Nick Chubb to go out there and run for a buck fifty and three touchdowns. No, but damn, it'd be sweet. I'll say if I had to give my rough prediction on his stats for this game. Probably get around a dozen carries or something. It'll be a low number, I bet. They're not going to run him out there ragged. Unless he's really feeling good. And then uh, then they can maybe feed him a little bit more. But got to see how that leg feels you know, in a game situation. Let him take a couple hits and see how he is. But man, kind of sucks that he's coming back to this. Right? She was coming back to a better team. I mean, talent-wise, this team is just like last year. But record-wise, we suck. Maybe this is our chance to show that, you know, the record doesn't really reflect how good this team is. We just haven't been able to execute. Maybe Nick Chubb coming back will open up the offense a bit. You know, having a running back that essentially runs sideline to sideline instead of he runs straight ahead. I mean, after all, we've seen Nick Chubb literally create holes himself. Of course, that was pre-injury. Last time he did have a gruesome leg injury in college, he came back and he ran ragged all over college football. So let's see how he does it here. What if it's an Adrian Peterson-esque return just goes off? I would love it. I'm sure the offense would love it too. Because that would take a lot of pressure off of everybody on the offense. So I mentioned Kevin Stefanski would have his closer back. For those who remember 2020, when we were in the lead in the fourth quarter, we all knew what they were going to do. The defense knew what they were going to do, and they couldn't stop it. 
Kevin Stefanski just kept giving it to Nick Chubb, and he would grind defenses down to a bloody hulp. And it was just awesome to watch because they couldn't stop him. By the time the fourth quarter came around, defenses were already tired. And then they had to deal with Nick Chubb running it another several times to finish games. Just happy to have him back. And then we'll see about like Naheem Hines and some of the other guys. But I'm just happy we're starting to get dudes back, you know. But uh, yeah, this should be an interesting game. Looking at the series history, of course, the Bungles do lead the overall series. Um, 23 to 48. Cincinnati's last win came week 18 when the game didn't matter because we were resting all of our good players. Of course, that's really the only time they can beat us, seemingly. And then the Browns won last year, week one, and Deshaun Watson and company went out there and whooped their ass like they always do. Hopefully is the same thing this year. Oh, he's to victory. Simple. Chubb season. Get Nick Chubb going. I'm not saying, you know, run him out there and, you know, run his legs off. No. Give him a good amount of carries. Get him in the open field. Watch him work his magic. Hey, right? Watch him work his magic. I swear to God, if he comes back, and he has a monster game. Everyone's going to be like, See, that was the reason why our offense sucked. Because Nick Chubb was out. I mean, he's not the solution. But he's a good part of it. I mean, he'll alleviate the pressure. Because, I mean, like I said. It's different having a running back like Nick Chubb compared to Jerome Ford. Who, by the way, is uh, hurt. So we'll see if he plays this week. I believe it was a hamstring injury he suffered. So our running back room right now is Nick Chubb. And Deontay Foreman with a little bit of Pierre Strong. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. I mean, Deontay Foreman actually looks decent. Is he Kareem Hunt? No. But he's decent. Better than nothing. All right. But yeah, uh, Nick Chubb season for sure. Number two, get after Joe Burrow. Enforce mistakes. Miles Garrett, you know what to do, buddy. You love attacking Miles. You love attacking that boy from Athens, Ohio who went to Ohio State and then went to LSU and won a national championship, right? They call him, what do they call him now over there in Cincinnati? Uh, Slim Shiesty, whatever. Joe Burr, right? Yeah, go after Joe Burr, <laughs> right? Call him Joe Burr. No, he got sacked again. Oh, he got sacked again. Oh, he got sacked again. <laughs> I just need Miles Garrett and Zadarius Smith to wreak havoc this week. No Denzel going to have his thing with Jamar Chase. I feel like Denzel going to clamp him up. But my worry is, who the hell is going to be guarding T. Higgins? I mean, because can I trust the dancing man to guard him? MJ Emerson. Is he done being burnt toast for a week? I mean, honestly, I would I think I'd trust Cameron Mitchell more than those two. I mean, Greg Newsom's good when he's not thinking about dancing. Half the time that dude does anything, he... <laughs> like, hey, Greg, if you put more effort, or if you put as much effort into playing ball as you do into dancing, you'd be a damn good corner. Just saying. Just saying. Dude makes one little play, tips a ball. <laughs> kind of agitates me, not gonna lie. Well, if you're if you're gonna dance, do it like if you get a pick six or something, right? Stupid. Make the damn play before you start dancing around like a damn lunatic. But yeah, get after Joe Burrow and force mistakes. It's that simple. And number three, please, no derping. If you're wondering what I mean, watch that last drive we had. Driving down the field really well, right? This is right after the Eagles scored the touchdown. We're driving down the field. Deshaun actually looks decent. They're moving the ball. 
They get in the red zone, I think, for the first time all game. They're like inside the five. Back to back false starts. Reduced to a field goal. That's what I mean by derping. Now, of course, with Nick Chubb, I don't think you really have to worry. You have a bulldozer to get that touchdown. Because obviously, Jerome Ford isn't capable of just running straight ahead. He can't. He's not a bulldozer. He's, I don't even know what you even call him. He ain't no damn bulldozer, that's for sure. He's only good in space. Nick Chubb, you can put him in a crowd and he will just run right through people. That's the beauty of it. He's so hard to bring down when he's running, when he's already up to speed. But yeah, you know, if you get in the red zone, get a touchdown, right? It's that simple. Field goals are not bad, but I want six instead of three, please. Well, my player to watch, you guys already know who this is going to be. No secret. Miles Garrett. He has had, since he's number, since he came into the league, and he has practically lived in their backfield the last couple of years. And I don't expect that to change. I mean, they're either going to have him against Orlando Brown Jr. or the rookie of Marius Mims. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I got Miles Garrett having a good game this week. Especially if the other guys do their part. And when it comes to my prediction... I know last week I said the Eagles were going to kick our ass. But you know what? We actually hung in the game. That has me feeling a little good about this week. Because uh, if we can just do what we do, go out there and take care of business, I think we win in this game. I do not have us losing at home to these losers. We do not lose to the Bungles at home. It does not happen. It has not happened since we went 0-16. And if you ask me, it won't happen under Kevin Stefanski. It hasn't happened yet, and I don't think it will happen. So give me the Browns to win this damn game 24-13. Yeah, how about that? I have a win. I have a score in over 20 points, and I have us winning. We do not lose to these bums at home. It does not happen. And the way I see it, this game will tell me a lot about this team. Because I swear to God. Even, especially if they bring if they break out the cardiac kid combo. If they go out there on Sunday against these losers, right? These frauds, these bums. And they lose at home. That'll tell me this season's officially cooked. This team is cooked. It's mock draft season for real. At least beating the Bungles will give us a little bit of hope. Like, oh, you know, they want to know in the division. You know, they kicked the crap out of the Bungles again. It's like, yeah, we may stink, but we still own the Bungles. They could go, they could lose the rest of their games. As long as they win their division games, I do not care at this point. <laughs> uh, Browns restructured Cooper's deal before the season. Oh, look at that. Browns uh, just traded Amari Cooper. The Browns traded Amari Cooper to the Buffalo Bills. As I'm filming this video, from me and Rappaport, just as I was about to wrap up this video, Amari Cooper gone, now he's in Buffalo. All right. Wow. Just as I was filming this video. Third round pick. In return. Wow. Well, I mean, he's, he's going to have fun in Buffalo. I know that for a fact. All right. So, um, for those wondering, am I camping? Like, this legit just happened. <laughs> Better love it. All right. Well, um, had a hunch something was going to happen, but... legit just happened right as I was about to end my video I took a peek at my phone and I see the bills traded for Amari Cooper 
how the trade winds have begun blowing. Who are the Bruins going to trade next? I don't really see them really trading many many more people. I know, uh, you know, they have those that crowd that thinks they should trade like some of their cornerstone players. But let me tell you something. If you trade any more of your cornerstone players, because the thing with Cooper is he was on a one-year thing anyway. Was he even going to come back next year? Probably not. I don't know. They restructured his deal and everything. He was going to be a free agent anyway. This gives him a chance to latch on with the Bills and maybe make something happen. Maybe he'll get more money there. You know, uh, with his next team, with Josh Allen, compared to uh, Deshaun. Because Deshaun looks uh, ass right now. Imagine, I mean, honestly, the Buffalo Bills kind of do need a receiver. They lost Diggs, and they just haven't been the same. Uh, yeah. Nothing like some good old breaking news during my uh, preview video. But, um... Okay, so Jerry Judy should be getting more reps and Elijah Moore and maybe that'll open it up for Jamari Thrash to finally play a little bit more because we haven't seen him yet. Kadarius, Tony. Honestly, I forgot we had him on the team. He's on the practice squad. Yeah, so. Cooper was pretty good here, but yeah, this season, I think the trade rumors got were in his head. Now, you trade rumors were in his head, and he just couldn't concentrate, and he couldn't lock in. Because he was dropping a lot of balls. So, we'll see how he does in Buffalo. Watch him go off now. <laughs> Swear to God, watch him go off now. Hey, you know, I mean, he was a pro. A pro's pro. You know, he wasn't pouting or, you know, moping around. He went out there and tried. Just didn't work out. Oh, well, so nothing like a little breaking news at the end of my preview video. So, yeah, now we go wrap this up. And um, I would usually I would shout out fans of the other team, but I hate that whole damn Bungle fan base. So uh, screw y'all. Honestly, I would not be mad if uh, the city of Cincinnati like broke off from Ohio and like floated down the river. Not just the Kentucky. I'm talking like floated all the way down the river and just fell apart just sank into the river just yeah actually no I, i'd say uh you know wish we could slice off freaking Con Con cincinnati like they did in uh what was it uh bugs bunny with florida take a big ass freaking saw and slice off cincinnati and in the words of patrick push it somewhere else because i'll tell you what Cincinnati sports have really ruined the uh, reputation of Ohio when it comes to sports as of late because their teams ain't done nothing. They always flounder in the big moments. You know, Columbus and Cleveland be carrying the state when it comes to pro sports, it seems like, lately. Yeah, um, let me know what you guys think of the Amari Cooper trade. You know, um, we got a third round pick in return. And yeah, so that's... It's cool. You know, nothing like a little breaking news, whatever. So that's going to wrap it up. This video went over 20 minutes. So, uh, yeah, we love it. And by the way, it's my birthday week coming up after this game. I swear to God, if they lose to start off my birthday week, and if they lose rocking the, the combo, the cardiac kid combo at home, to the bungles? Oh, that's a lot of whammies right there. You're losing at home to the bungles in the cardiac kid combo. And then uh, on my birthday week. That's a lot of whammies. So let's go out there. Let's get this dub and uh, show the people that we're still a decent team. We just haven't been playing well. Right? And no matter how bad we are, we still own the bungles. Before I go, you know I gotta do it. Bungles, 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 bungles. Hey man, that's a Ravens Red Zone thing. Yo, where's Ravens Red Zone even at? I haven't even heard from them in like a year plus. Besides, you know, they're not even on YouTube really anymore. You know I gotta keep the tradition thing going. Come on now, what are you 
you kidding me, man? Did they trademark it? No. Uh, I just do it to troll the bungles, right? Bungles, 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 bungles. Yeah, let's go out and win on Sunday, okay? That would really make my uh, week so much better. With that being said, I'm Crazy Dog. Let's go, Browns. Beat the damn bungles. And I'll see you guys later tonight for Guardians-Yankees Game 2. See you guys then. Go Browns. I'm Crazy Dog. And I'm out. Bye.